I'm reliably informed that 4G mobile hotspots are really good for live streaming. Gotta say, that is complete and utter. <laughs> mapping a car or mapping a Subaru is pretty much like baking a cake. There's a recipe. You don't have to follow it exactly. Every mapper has got their own particular way of doing things. Some like more boost, some like slightly leaner, some, some like to add power using ignition timing. But there's basically the, the same elements in all tuning. So what I'm going to do is go through my process, how I do it, um, the elements that um, I think add to the recipe, and the elements that I think are more dangerous than they're worth, more risky. So sorry about what happened midweek with the live stream. Uh, wasn't going to happen. Signal's great during the day, but in the evening, when I was wanting to do a live stream, nothing, nada. So write that off, uh, apologies. So putting that into a video that I'm releasing today. So this is it. Like any kind of cooking, uh, there are certain tools for doing the job. You can't make a cake without them. You can't tune a car without them. So my tools are deck cans, first and foremost. Can't tune without them, not on a Subaru. Secondly, a wideband. The standard Subaru ECU doesn't have completely accurate fueling sensors. It only uses a narrow band. So a wide band is absolutely essential to see exactly what is going on. I use a Innovate LM2, um, like the one shown here. Works perfectly. Just hook it up to the tailpipe and it gives me the readings real time as to whether it's lean, rich, or, you know, exactly right. Obviously, another element that you need, another tool for the job, is the lead for the ECU. So if it's, if it's the standard ECU on a new age Subaru, then it'll be a Tactrix cable. If you've got a Link G4, it'll be the cable for the Link. If you've got a Cyvex, it'll be a crossover Ethernet cable. Um, many other ECUs are available. They will all have their own particular cable and you should use that with your laptop. Another tool. So on to baking the cake, on to making your recipe, on to making your tune. The starting point, in my opinion, has to be super safe. So if you're tuning with the standard ECU, get the standard base map or the map that it's running at the moment and make it super safe. By that, what I mean is, is take out all the boost, put it back to wastegate zero duty, put the boost target down, take out a few degrees of ignition timing just to make it super safe. And I would start from that as a base map, a starting point. Obviously I've been tuning Subarus for years. Um, so I've got safe starting point maps, base maps for every single ECU ROM description that that Subaru's dreamt up over the years. So I generally start with one of those, but if you're starting this for the first time, get the standard map for your car and use that as a safe starting point. So this is an example of, uh, let's say a Blob IWRX ECU. You can see that I've dropped the wastegate duty down to zero, um, a maximum of zero, dropped the initial wastegate duty down to zero as well and drop the boost target down um, to below standard. Using those parameters, it should reach about 0.5 bar of boost if you're on a standard turbo. You can see that I'm also dropping the ignition timer down three or four degrees just to give a bit of extra safety from detonation. And then we're ready to test. So the first part is really a run from probably around 2000 RPM up to 4000 RPM, just to see whether the fueling is in the general ballpark of what you're wanting to achieve. Um, as a safe starting point, I'd aim for around 11 to one AFR, just to give you a safe starting point for then building the boost, add, add in ignition timing and building it up from there. But when I'm doing it, I'm, I'm aiming for around 11, three to one, making sure that it's safe at that, not detting, 
and then we can build up. So doing it on the dyno, it's a lot easier, but on the road, if you're tuning for yourself, that's where you'll be doing it most probably. Start off with an initial run, two to 4,000 ish. If the fueling's right and it's not detting, then start going up a bit higher. So two to 5,000, two to 6,000, just to make sure that the fueling is fine for that sort of initial starting point. If it's not fine, add more fuel until it is fine. Don't try and start adding boost or adding ignition timing or playing with the cam timing. Don't do any of that because that's, you know, it's a road to ruin. Um, so your first starting point is make it safe and then take it from there. So let's say it's safe. It's 11.3 all the way up from two to six, six and a half thousand half a bar of boost perfect lovely then I would start adding the boost in until we get into the sort of levels that you're wanting to achieve with the map on a blob eye WRX for example with the TDO4 turbo you'd probably see um, from my experience the the best performance the best power the best torque seems to be at about the 1.3 bar mark so 18.2 PSI of boost. You start pushing more boost than that and it just generates heat and it actually costs power. And then, and only then, can we start adding ignition timing. So to summarize so far, fueling, get that safe. Boost down to as low as you can get it. And then keep building the boost and making sure that the fueling is safe before you start playing with the ignition timing. If you tune in a car with VVT, such as a um, New Age STI or a WRX from 2006 onwards, then it's probably best to leave that at the standard setup for the moment, unless you know and can demonstrate that it is actually producing more power, it's probably best to leave with the standard setup. When you get onto tuning on a dyno, you can test each element of the VVT, whether it be intake cam timing or exhaust timing, to see whether they're actually making improvement in power or whether you, you just think that more is good. It isn't always. So that's the process. Really simple, really easy. Follow the recipe, but add to taste. So boost, fueling, ignition timing will depend on your fuel, on your car, Every Subaru is different. I hope you found that relatively useful. Um, it would have been nicer, I think, to have a live chat with questions and answers going through that. But um, if you want to drop your questions below, then I will answer them all and um, see if I can build on this for the next stage, which will be um, live tuning a car. The Mapping Academy live stream sessions will start on the Wednesday after a normal live stream. So I'll be doing two sessions on the first Wednesday in October, one at 8 p.m. for normal people, um, <laughs> for everyone, and um, one at nine o'clock UK time for Mapping Academy members. So tune in for those and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.